Good evening and welcome back to Bread and Butter Primary Care. I'm Dr. Stokes and today we're going to talk some more about uh, hypertension, <clears throat> high blood pressure. Uh, the title of this video is Hypertension Important History Elements. So we're going to be talking about the type of things you get for a medical history when dealing with hypertension. Um, I'm going to split it into two parts. One, um, a new patient. So someone where the diagnosis of hypertension is just happening um, and kind of the history that would lead up to that. And then the history that you take on a hypertensive follow-up. So a lot of primary care, um, especially bread and butter primary care medicine, um, is chronic disease management. Uh, it's something that I found that isn't taught nearly as much in medical schools. Uh, we learn about the um, HPI questions, when did things start, what makes them different, what makes them change. But the, um, as far as history involved with chronic management of something that someone already has, then we, we don't talk as much about it. So that's why I'm hoping these videos can be helpful, is how do you approach, um, if you're in your clerkship, you're a medical student or a health provider, student of some sort, and you're going into your clerkships um, and you go in to see someone, and then there's not a complaint. It's like, well, I'm here to follow up on my blood pressure. How do you approach that? That's what we're going to be talking about. So history elements that would be important for a new diagnosis. Um, so usually um, you notice that someone's blood pressure is high because it's hot. Um, so you go into the room and you look at the vitals and their blood pressure is elevated. And so that's what's going to trigger questions about that. Most of the history that is helpful for a new diagnosis is history of previous issues with this or is this like the very first time they've ever been told this so oftentimes a good question is something like I notice your blood pressure is elevated today have you had any other times either at the dentist the doctor on other occasions where someone has told you your blood pressure is high oftentimes they'll be like oh yeah every time I go to the doctor they always say that or every time I go to the dentist they've always commented or I went to health fair one at one time they said it was borderline and I should see my doctor and so then you get a sense of okay this isn't like a one-time thing it's not just today and so have you ever had this before you know if so in what circumstances do you ever check when you're not at a doctor's office is another good question. Um, do you check while you're at the pharmacy? Do you happen to have a monitor at home? Have you ever monitored to see what your blood pressure is when you're just kind of doing your normal thing? Most people who've never had diagnosis don't, um, but you never know when maybe they could say, oh yeah, I actually have monitored and I've noticed this or that or the other. Sometimes they'll have a family member who's a nurse or, you know, a paramedic or something. And so they've they've been checked or they work in, in a healthcare facility where they've been checked on a few occasions or something. Um, so that's probably the most important thing. I mean, the history as far as chronic disease management is usually pretty straightforward. And so have you ever had this before? Have you ever noticed this on your own monitoring? Um, have you ever taken any medications before? Is this something that's ever been dealt with? And then you have a good sense of how to proceed. The review of systems um, focuses mostly around anything that might um, go along with the comorbidities of hypertension. So you would think of things like, you know, chest pain and difficulty breathing, um, swelling in the extremities, uh, any problems with headache, ringing in the ears, those types of things that might um, come along. They call hypertension the silent killer. That's because it's silent. And so usually in a lot of cases, there are no s symptoms. There are no um, physical exam findings necessary that go along with it because it kind of happens under the surface and is not really noticeable. So that's kind of with a new patient who you're just diagnosed with hypertension. So very commonly, you'll have someone, you'll be with your preceptor or whatever, and they'll say, well, why don't you go see Mr. Jones, or, and uh, he's here to follow up on his blood pressure. And so sometimes it can be awkward to think, okay, well, well, how do I do that? You know, it's like I don't really, can't really follow the HPI in a situation like that. And so um, if you're following up, on a chronic condition, then usually the history is going to focus around compliance is the way I like to think about it. So you want to find out um, what are they taking, if anything, you know, what lifestyle things are they doing, what medications are they taking, what natural things are they doing, and are they doing it regularly? Um, and so important questions for following up with blood pressure would be things like, how are things going with your medications? Are you able to take it every day? 
what do you take? Now, that's an interesting question because you have the list in front of you, so likely you're going to know that, well, they are supposed to be taking lisinopril. Or, um, but sometimes I find it helpful to see if they are able to report their medications and when they take it. Um, and so you can say, well, what, what is it you take for your blood pressure? Oftentimes they don't know the name and that's, that's reasonable. Sometimes they will, but even if they don't, they're like, oh, I don't know. It's, you know, there's two pills. I, I can't remember what they're called, but then you can also say, well, how often do you take them? Now that's sometimes more helpful than saying, I see that you're on lisinopril and you're supposed to take it once a day. Are you doing that? It's very easy to say yes to that question because you know that yes is the right answer, even though maybe they aren't. Um, or maybe there's one that's twice a day, they're only taking it once. And so I find you get pretty accurate information if you just have them report it. Say, well, how often do you take, tell me about the lisinopril, how often do you take that? Oh, I take that one in the morning, once a day. Um, how about the metoprolol, how often do you take that one? Oh, that one's twice a day, I take one in the morning, one at night. Things like that, then you get a good sense of if they're taking their medications, how they're taking it, and if it's if it's appropriate or not, and they're not just saying yes or no according to whatever question you asked. Um, so yeah, so chronic hypertension history questions are gonna mostly be focused around what you're taking, when, how, what's the compliance like, and then monitoring, you know, how's your blood pressure been? Do you have any sense of what it is when you're at home? Do you ever check at the pharmacy or at home and those types of things um, to see what their home measurements might be like? And review systems, you know, kind of the same, any changes, any chest pains or difficulty breathings and those types of things. And so that's kind of a sense of the history for hypertension. Like I said, pretty straightforward. It kind of makes sense, but sometimes you get in those situations where, oh man, I'm not even sure what to do. Um, I just like to think um, compliance, what are they taking, what are they taking. One of the very common things you'll run into with hypertension management on a chronic basis is running out of medications. Um, so it's very common that people will either run out of medications and not get refills, or they don't take it um, very often. They have an appointment and then they realize, oh, I've not been taking my medicine, and then two or three days before they start taking it again. And so when you ask, you know, hey, how's your, how's your medicine? Oh yeah, I take it, I take it every day. And so sometimes, you know, it's good to have a good conversation with them. Tell me about your medication, how often you take it. Do you find that you forget often to take it? Do you pretty much take it every single day? Um, have you run out? Oftentimes I'll just straight up ask, have you already run out and been without for a little while or are you still taking it even today? Uh, that can be a very good question as well um, to see and oftentimes, oh no, you know, you'll notice, especially if you notice the blood pressure is a little high, you'll find that, oh yeah, I actually ran out three days ago and I haven't taken it for three days. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Uh, history elements in evaluation of hypertension. Um, stay tuned for more and have a great night.